Hello my YouTube friends. In this video we're going to start building a signed copy of the AMK F14D. We'll paint it up in the Vandy 1 paint scheme and we'll have a lot of fun. Here we go. As you can see this box was signed by the CEO of AMK Models. CEO I guess is his name and I think that's really cool that it's kind of like a special edition. So opening up the box there is a lot of parts, lots of detail and I am really excited. What I'm even more excited about is this new technology, color 3D printing. I decided to try out the Quinta Studio cockpit set for this model and it looks so cool. The little gauges and the screens have a shiny finish on them to make them look like glass. The buttons are raised up in 3D and they're all in color. I think this is going to add a lot of interest to the cockpit when it's done. As you can see, I used the parts from the kit to create the seat. The seats are made up of several parts and they go together pretty well. There's a pretty big gap on one of the seats though that has to be corrected. But I like the way that the seats were designed by using several parts. It allows them to have more detail. I grabbed an old tube of testers putty and used a sculpting tool I got from Hobby Lobby to apply it into the gap of the seat. This seemed to work out really well. I used a little bit of lacquer thinner to clean it up to make sure that I didn't overdo it with the putty. In order to use the Quinta Studios 3D decals, I needed to sand off all of the molded detail in the cockpit control panels. Then I went ahead and glued the panels into the cockpit tub. I noticed that there was a small gap between the cockpit part and the control panel pieces, so I tried to fill those in as best I could. Although in hindsight, this probably wasn't necessary. And of course, here we have the obligatory paint bottle spill that I seem to do on every model. Moving on to some priming, I used some Vallejo products to prime up the cockpit. My camera did a really good job focusing on that.
I think the seats look really good when they're all painted in black. And then you can start adding a few details by hand painting. I used some metal colors to highlight some of the details on the back. And I used a green color from Tamiya to paint the seat covers. This part of model building I find very relaxing and rewarding, but it can also be really frustrating when the paint doesn't do what you want it to, or even worse, your hands don't exactly do what you want them to do, and you put paint where it's not supposed to be. I remember watching a video a while back, I can't remember who did it. They explained that when you want to paint red over black, it's a good idea to first paint with yellow. Yellow is a really good color that helps bring out the red, and I found that to be true here. After painting some of the details yellow, I covered the yellow paint with red and it really stood out a lot better than if I had just painted red over the black. To be honest, I don't know how accurate my paintwork is. I'm not sure if I got all the colors in the right places. I just painted what felt right. From what I gather, these instrument panel cover thingies have a like a fabric or leather covering that's brown. And so I mixed a couple of colors together to try and indicate that. I don't know if this is the right color, but it looks nice. And throughout the build of this model, you'll realize that I'm not going for super accurate. I'm just going for what looks cool and working on my skills, practicing and trying to get better. For example, I know that this particular airplane, all of the pictures that I've seen of it None of the pictures have any live ordnance, but the decals that come with the kit all have the yellow stripe, and I think that means it's live, it's not inert, but I'm gonna add those anyway because I think the decals make them look really cool, and I just want something interesting to look at by the time I'm done. Before adding all of the weathering and the decals, I went ahead and sprayed some gloss clear varnish from Vallejo so that the decals would adhere a lot better and also so it would be easier to do washes. Now it's time for the really fun part. I've been looking forward to this part for a while. I've never used 3D decals before, but I was anxious to see how they work. And because they're on decal paper, apparently you can just attach these to your model without any glue. But I decided to stay on the safe side and I used a little bit of Mod Podge as an adhesive to keep the decals from moving around. Plus, the Mod Podge takes a long time to dry, so it's easier to get the decals into the exact position that I want. So I went ahead and put the decals on one at a time, and it was really easy. I had no trouble getting them to stick and put them where I wanted to put them.
After all the Quinta Studios decals were added, it really started to come alive. I think it looks awesome. The kit decals on the other hand were not as easy to put on, especially with these smaller ones like on the ejection seat. It was a little bit of work to get them into position. They really do make the model come to life though, and I'm glad that I put them on. Looks so cool. And now for the part that I always struggle with, and you'll probably be able to see that in the video. I want to get really good at oil washes and using oil paints to help weather my models. I have no idea what I'm doing though, and you can probably tell. I mixed up some oil paints with some mineral spirits, and I just tried to add extra color and texture to some of the model parts. I had varying levels of success. I tried to give more of a weathered look to these fabric cover thingies using different colors to, to indicate folds or wear. It turned out okay, but while I was doing it, I was getting really frustrated. One of the issues that I did run into with the Quinta Studios decals was that some of the colors didn't exactly match the color that I had painted the cockpit. So on some of the parts that needed to have the same paneling color, I went ahead and covered those up with my cockpit color. Next, it was time to do some weathering. I decided to create a wash for dust effects using this Vallejo paint, and I went over all of the pieces with it. In hindsight, I don't think this really enhanced the look at all, and it probably could have done without it, but I wanted to give it a try. The next weathering technique that I tried to do was add some wear to some of the panels by using some Vallejo silver and make it look like some of the paint had rubbed off so that the bare metal was showing. After I did all my paintwork and decals and weather effects, it was time to put it all together. 
Because I had painted all the pieces separately and there was paint on the contact surfaces, I decided to use some super glue to glue everything together. I found this piece of the model very interesting. I don't really know the whole process for injection molding, but this whole nose section was molded in one piece from all sides, which I think is really cool and I've never seen anything like that before. I could see that there were some very faint mold lines that ran through the length of the part. So I went ahead and sanded those smooth and I did end up having to rescribe some of the panel lines because they got really soft after sanding. But overall this part turned out really cool and I really like the detail that it has. In case you're wondering what kind of tool this is, this is something that I found at the dollar store. It was in the cosmetics section. I think it's actually used for like piercing ears, but it has a really sharp point. And once I sharpened it a little bit more with some sandpaper, it did a really good job of rescribing these panel lines. I think I'll keep using it in the future. And it was only a dollar. For the most part, all of the pieces in this part of the build went together very easily. I didn't really have any problems. I did forget to put a piece in before sliding the cockpit into the nose section. And before the cockpit is slid into place, it has to be connected to the nose gear pieces. I'll show those parts in the next video. For now, here is how the cockpit turned out. If you like this video, leave a comment below and like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. It'll help me grow my channel and help me to continue to grow and get better at modeling. See you in the next one.